All right, let's talk about <clears throat> getting your infrastructure set up for Lando, Contenta CMS, and Nux.js. So we'll build a uh, backend API on Drupal with the Contenta C Content CMS distribution, which will fire up Drupal and some good uh, modules for a headless experience like JSON API decoupled router. And we'll spin up a Nux.js front end and we'll manage all that with Lando. And then we'll have our infrastructure ready to build a uh, decouple Drupal app. Let's check it out. So some documentation sites that help you get going and extend your ideas. docs.devwithlando.io that will help you get Lando if you don't have it and how to configure it and extend it to do the things you're trying to do. On thinktandem.io we have a blog post Lando plus Contenta CMS plus Nux part one which is the text version of this video which uh, you can walk through that at your leisure if you prefer text to video. Uh, this uh, Drupal Docs page it tells you how to disable the uh, caching during development, which will be useful for developing our Contenta CMS API app. This is contentacms.org, where you can lead, read about Contenta and what it has to offer. And there's some great videos there as well, telling you how to query uh, the Contenta backend for data from Drupal. Um, and they show a lot of Postman examples. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to use it from a JavaScript app, uh, Nux.js, using Axios. This is Nux.js.org, where you can read the documentation about Nux.js, which is a, a JavaScript framework based on Vue.js. So that's what we'll be using for our front end. Great, let's get started. What I've got here is a command line, and I'm just gonna make a directory Here's my outline over here uh, for the my a API app where we'll put content to CMS. Make dir my API. You can name that anything you like. For the purposes of this, this tutorial, we'll call it my API. I'm gonna change into that directory. I'm gonna initialize Lando, our Lando app, and I'm gonna pick Drupal 8. So nothing too special here. Uh, content to CMS is gonna be set up for a, a Doc root inside the web directory, so we'll call it that. Uh, we'll call this app my API. We'll start this up so we have access to our tooling. And all of that does is create the .lando.yaml file that we're spinning up now. And I can show you that. So all we've got right now is this .lando.yaml config file, which is Drupal 8, the web root of web. So that's spinning up. Once that gets through, uh, we'll have access to Composer. So we'll do this uh, Composer command here. Lando Composer create project, which will go out and grab Content to CMS distro for us. Um, and we're gonna install that into a directory called blah, because Composer will not let us um, create a new project in a directory that already has something in it. And in this case, we have the .lando.ml file. So I'm gonna, this is a little bit of a loop here, but I'm gonna create it in blob and I'll move everything out of blob back to where we are now. Um, and then I'll just remove the temporary blob directory. And then a Lando Composer install and uh, we'll be on our way with our Drupal site uh, code base ready to go. All right, while that's happening, we can get started on the Nuxt section over here, and we'll create the directories for the Nuxt app. So let's take a look at that. Let's quit out of these. So we're going to uh, use a custom.lano.yaml file for this, and I've got one prepared. That I'm going to copy into this directory, and I'll show you that once I do that. take a look at this. So what we've got here is a, we're not using a recipe on this, we're using a custom custom.lando.yaml file to spin up our JavaScript stack. So what we've got is we're setting up a proxy to give our app a URL. Uh, we're spinning up an app server, which is a node server, node 10. And then we're giving it a command to run, which is yarn dev. And we're gonna run that in port 80 and yarn dev is just gonna serve the uh, the Nux.js app for us. 
uh, install dependencies as me, yarn install, so we'll use yarn as our package manager. And then we're exposing the tooling of yarn npm node and the nuxt cli command, which will all live inside of our container. So that's our .lando.yaml file for this app. And so now we've got that .lando.yaml, so we can lando start to expose the tooling. And we can go back to our Drupal side while that's spinning up and grabbing those dependencies. So what we want to do now is this big long uh, composer campaign. Got a little copy paste problem there, no baby. extra spaces. Sorry about that. Copy and paste error. Alright, so now that we've spun up this Lando Content to CMS app, we have access to our composer tooling. So we can fire off that command and grab the content to CMS distribution. So now we got up in this top pane a um, composer command grabbing our content to CMS distribution. And down here we have a Lando start running, pulling in our, uh, our uh, node dependencies, uh, the containers for those, so that we can run the node app, which would be Nuxt.js. All right, great. So the Drupal side is done, the JavaScript side is done. So right now everything's in blah, so we're going to move that stuff out of there and move it down one level. Move everything from blah down to here, and we gotta get the dot files as well. So now we should have some stuff to do. Great, and now we're going to uh, composer install to uh, grab Drupal and all that stuff. Okay, while well that's grabbing all those dependencies. Uh, we can go back, jump over to the JavaScript side, down here in this bottom pane. And we've just Lando started, so now we're going to create a Nuxt app. So you see what we've got so far is just this uh, dependency uh, structure. So we're going to Lando, yarn, create, Nuxt app and we want to create it right here. So the yarn will let us create an app right in the directory even though it has a .lando file, so that's great. We're going to make use of that. We're not going to have to do that tricky move step. That's going to, so similar to Composer, that's going out and finish fetching the dependencies. So we got Composer to fetch our PHP dependencies on the Drupal side. We've got yarn fetching our JavaScript dependencies for the front end app name the app and we'll call it my nuxt um, description so this is nuxt front end or contenta cms api uh, use a custom framework we are not going to use a custom framework for our for our server uh, you here you can pick a Linter and Prettier. I, I like to use those on these on these projects, but for this purpose, we definitely need Axios. That's the library we're going to use to make our calls to the contents of CMS backend. And I'm going to use Bootstrap because I like that. And I'm not going to use any test framework here, but of course, you're welcome to use what you like. We're going to do a universal author of your app, package manager. We're going to use Yarn. Here, composer going up here. This top pane is the content of CMS app, and this bottom pane is the Nuxt app. So, what you have here is two independent um, Lando apps that are going to communicate with each other. In part two, we'll show you how to make that communication happen. The composer part is done. So, you can see we have what looks a lot like a Drupal app now. If you look in web, you'll see Drupal things. 
modules, robots.txt, and so on. Great. So now let's make the Drupal site a little bigger for the time being. We're going to uh, actually install the site uh, by using a drush command. So window drush si URL. Drupal 8 database name, Drupal 8 database password for a Lando app, for a Drupal 8 Lando app. Database is the database container. Drupal 8 is the name of the database. So that's going to fire up our Drupal installation, get us our Drupal tables, get our backend app ready to go. On the JavaScript side for Nuxt, let's see what we've got going on. So we've got some stuff in here for our Node app. We have some assets, components. Uh, and this is all the things that we need for our Nuxt app. Pages where it's where our routes will be generated. Nuxt will generate those routes automatically for us. We'll talk about more about that in part two. Um, so what we want to do now is uh, I'm going to restart this. So we can register all those dependencies that we pulled in, and then we'll have an app that we can visit. On the Drupal side, I think we've got Drupal installed here. It looks like we do, because we can clear the cache. And what I want to do is um, uh, this uh, drupal.org URL has some instructions on how to uh, disable caching on uh, development sites. We can do that. So I've got some of those files prepared. So one thing that I noticed when I pulled in consent to CMS is uh, this default directory is not writable. So I'm going to make that writable. chmod that 755 websites. So that looks better. All right. So let's copy in our files. So I've got these files pre-prepared from just from that node over here that you can visit and check it out. So what I've got is a couple, I got a settings.php and a settings local file. I'm going to move that to uh, web sites defaults. That's going to copy over the ones that are currently there. Um, and I want this uh, development.services.yaml file as well. Copy that in. That's going to go into web sites. So if we look at those just quickly, just to show you. So we've copied in this uh, services file to disable the caching for us. And we've copied in uh, the settings files to uh, run the app for us. Uh, this is my API, right? So you can see that we've got our URLs here you should be able to visit this. Great, so we've got contentious CMS there. What's going on with our JavaScript? That's done running, and we've got our Nuxt app running. Great, so you can see both those things are up and working, and we're ready to start developing. Check out these directory structures a little bit. So you saw this a little bit before, we've got components and logo.view for example is the big logo you're seeing there. And pages index is the index page. Uh, so you should be able to see it pulling in the logo thing somewhere. Logo. Oh, logo here. So they're pulling in that uh, component uh, right here. 
uh, and that's the index file. And we'll talk more about the routing and things like that uh, in part two. And on the Drupal side, probably very familiar to you, Drupal app. Uh, we investigated that a little bit. And in part two, we'll talk about how to get the communication going and make Axios callbacks from your Ups front end to your Drupal backend. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let's give a give a look on look out for part two and check us out on Slack or on the docs pages. Thanks. Bye.